we've seen a lot of screen mods for the original DMG Game Boy, but none of them have been without a few sacrifices. Today, we'll be looking at a brand new screen mod that claims to be a solder-free drop-in solution to give us the best possible image out of our old Game Boys. We will talk a bit more about some pre-existing mods and why this one is better at the end of the video, but for now, let's get this show on the road. I'll be using this crusty old DMG, which has an almost unrepairable screen. I picked this thing up for about £10 earlier on in the year. Whilst we take this apart, I briefly want to explain what I will be fitting. Retromodding have sent me this screen kit to assemble for entertainment purposes, but they do sell the fully assembled mod on their website for $89.99 or $69.99 for the unbuilt kit. There is many benefits to buying their pre-built kit, but we'll talk about that later on. This motherboard is the only thing we need out of this Game Boy, as I have new parts to go in the new build. Once it's removed, I will clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. Now let's take a look at the kit. Included in this kit is some double-sided tape, a speaker, two ribbon cables, an acrylic bracket, two wires, two PCBs, and of course the IPS screen. Set the main PCB down and grab the acrylic spacer. I should note this will not be sold in their $69.99 kit, this only comes with their pre-built mod. I cut and stick the double-sided tape down on the acrylic bracket. Now take out the screen. On the back of this screen there are four metal posts, three of which need to be bent up which will align and help hold the screen in place. Now plug the thinner of the two ribbon cables blue side up into both boards. Plug the larger ribbon cable into the back of the board and solder the speaker into place. The new shell I will be using has of course been supplied by Retro Modding and is this really unique logoless blue colour. To accentuate this I will be using some brand new Retro Modding white buttons complete with their exclusive custom moulded start and select pad. I put the buttons in and use some brand new membranes for good measure. We have to cut these two posts off to make room for the new elongated screen. I also had to remove a further piece in the top right hand side. After this is done, we can remove the screen protector and drop the whole thing into place, which is one of the only steps you need to do if you buy the pre-built kit. There is a bag of screws included with the kit. Go ahead and screw the PCB back into place. Once I had done that, I found the rubber pad caused too much pressure underneath the shell. So I took the whole thing apart again and removed about 2mm off of that. The static on the screen had caused some dust to attract to it, so I got some compressed air and sprayed that off. I then stuck this brand new logoless white glass screen lens into place. Now if you have bought Retro Modding's pre-built kit, you do not need to do this next step. If you bought the $69.99 kit, you don't necessarily need to do this step, however some of your colours will be inverted. We need to swap pins 6 and 7 around on the DMG's motherboard, due to some manufacturing fault on the new screen board. 
I have been told that this is only on a limited run of these screen boards and will not apply to everyone, so please check out Retromodding's website for more details. To do this, I will cut the traces with a knife, cut, strip and tin two small wires, then solder them into place. Finally, swap the cart shield over into the new shell and screw that down, then attach the new ribbon cable, screw the hole back on and add your battery contacts. And that's it. I cannot express just how beautiful this thing has turned out. The overall look of it is absolutely beautiful. Not just the quality of the screen, but the beautiful shell and buttons that have been provided to me by Retro Modding. I love the fact that they don't have any logos or text on them, it just makes the whole thing look overall more clean and minimalistic. The quality of the screen is absolutely mind-blowing. It has four times the pixel count, which increases the quality of the screen but does not take away the original shapes of the pixels. If anything, all it does is just slightly reduces the obvious lines defining each pixel. I really, really, really don't know what to say about this, hence why I just said really three times. It's such a beautiful thing. It is by far the best way for me to at least play Game Boy games right now. The quality of the screen, as you can see, you can change the color and then when you turn it off, it does actually remember the previous color that you had chosen on there. You've got the new contrast wheel on the side, which is actually a, um, a brightness setting. And if you press that in, that's what's going to change the colors of your uh, backlight. So really innovative design. I really like that and it, everything feels very professional. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, there has been a slight issue with the productions of these boards. Now, it isn't going to be for forever. Retro Modding will update their stock with the newly revised board that doesn't have this issue. But for now, if you purchase the kit for $69.99, you will have to do a tiny bit of soldering. It is not a crucial repair to do. You do not have to flip those two traces round, but the gradient of greys on the last two is basically swapped round. So where you should have some darker areas, they're actually going to look slightly lighter and vice versa. So it depends if you want that. Some people might think that looks quite unique and cool, but realistically, unless you want to wait until the new revised one comes out and you don't know how to solder, I would just get Retro Modding's pre-built kit. That is enough waffle, let's have a look at this beautiful thing. So when you change the colors on the side, you're doing that just by pressing in the new sort of contrast wheel, um, which does actually still function as a sort of brightness slash contrast wheel. When you turn the unit off and turn it back on again, it remembers what color you previously had on. So you've sort of got the pea green original um, sh you know, color shade on there. I've got a, uh, a fake cartridge in there, which is why it says common. The screen size is the original size. There is no modification or new lenses required. This is the exact same size screen. There have been some three inch screens made for the DMG Game Boy in the past, but you have to enlarge the hole and get custom lenses and it's a little bit more tricky to install. So this is really, if you buy their kit, the only drop-in replacement kit to upgrade your DMG. And it's definitely worth it. I would really be interested to hear what your thoughts are. It's definitely early days. It sort of, in some aspects, doesn't make you uh, feel like you're playing a DMG Game Boy. It does make you sort of feel like you're playing on a really, really modern piece of technology, but you've got the original feeling input controls, which at least, you know, has that original feeling factor, the nostalgia factor for a lot of people. But I'm a massive fan of it. I really don't have a lot of things bad to say about it. The only one thing I definitely can say is the screen is not perfectly aligned. The only way you can get around that is if you tape the screen in first and align it first and then don't actually bother connecting the screen to the board. You can do that if you want. 
um, in which case the kit is going to be more for you and not so much the pre-built one. But I don't actually think it's a massive issue. It's not too far off center that it's going to cause any problems to me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I would definitely be interested to hear your thoughts. Ultimate Game Boy that I built a few months ago, or in fact about a month ago, had a smaller screen. So although it was a backlit LCD screen, it was a far smaller screen. So you had to buy a custom lens that enlarged the bezel, which some people really didn't like. It also wasn't an IPS screen. It was a transflective display, which was high quality, but just not quite as high quality as this one. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks again for Retromodding for giving me these parts. Check them out in the description below. See you guys later.